Greetings. Today is Mo Day. A little bit early. <clears throat> Started around 7. It's about 9.45. So it takes me about an hour to go down one way. And then it takes me about a half hour to rake it. So I mowed down, raked it, mowed back, raked it. May 15th is the peak nutritional uh, value date for the grass in Vermont. So every day after that, the grass loses its nutrients. So I'm a week ahead so that by the time that I get over a little bit more, um, the grass will be at its um, height, nutritional value. And then if you cut it um, early enough, that'll allow it to regrow uh, an equal amount uh, two to three more times, depending on the season. So this is all the beautiful violets, dandelions. This is the reason uh, Jay's Grass-Fed Garden is called Jay's Grass-Fed Garden. Um, I use the grass as my number one source of fertility. Keeping down the weeds, uh, retaining moisture, and feeding the soil. And also, the land is not getting ran over, compacted, loud noise uh, with a mower. This side will be, but this side has been for many years and it won't be this year. I don't know if we're going to get all the way back out there, but I'm just going to do it little pieces and see how much I can accomplish. I did, if you go to those two pine trees right there and make a line, that's about how far, if that makes any sense, that's about how far I made it last year and then all the way down. But I did it in three different sections going the opposite way. So now I'm coming this way. Uh, also, that's, I went that way, so now I want to come this way, and then when I cut it again, I'll go back that way. Um, kind of like similar how do you do, how you mow uh, actual lawn. But, yeah, so it's just, it's an amazing art, and I have a deep appreciation for it, uh, more than ever. And if you live in New England, this is how, uh, many other places too, but, you know, uh, basically before the lawnmower uh, was invented uh, this is how pastures used to be cut so this uh, frees me from the gas line infrastructure although I still do have to use my Subaru so that doesn't free me but in terms of fertility for this space In terms of fertility for this space, uh, I am not dependent upon the gas line infrastructure. So that's a pretty cool thing. When you think about all these um, large scale farms that um, they're dependent upon the tractor to mow the field. And a lot of people in a wet spring like this, it just rained the last four days in a row. I'm out here mowing uh, they won't be able to mow for another month. So the grass is going to be way past that peak nutritional value and it won't allow it to grow up um, an equal amount as much as I explained in the beginning of the video. So one love wholeness. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the garden real quick. Uh, everything is happening. Tulips, 
came and went first year on these. I uh, planted some marigolds here. And the garlic is all coming up nice. Lots and lots of garlic. Uh, some Mazuna Asian greens. Three rows of arugula right here. Intermixed with Mazuna. I know it's kind of hard to see it all. But uh, all the garlic. And there's lots of lettuces. Oh, lettuces coming up. That's the Mizuna. That's the arugula. A nice flush of French French breakfast radishes. This is a wild arugula that becomes a perennial. Uh, overwintered, negative 32 degrees. Um, more radishes. Nice another flush. Some spinach that overwintered also in negative 32. I'll be saving my seed off that. Uh, there's lettuce and more radishes in here. Some lettuce right there that overwintered in the negative 32. Be saving seed off that. This whole row of garlic intermixed has lettuce going down this whole row intermixed with the garlic potatoes 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 um, overwintered carrots I'm gonna be saving seed off that at least trying to more lettuce planted here not coming up yet The humongous potato bed give it a few more weeks um yeah still and then more lettuce coming down this whole row more lettuce coming down this whole row whole bunch of oregon snow peas all coming up And there'll be more lettuce coming up this row right here. Just taking a while with the temperature fluctuations. Some strawberry, uh, AC Valley Sunset June Bearing Strawberry. Uh, putting on some new growth. This garlic's doing really wonderful. Uh, just a berry cutting putting on some nice leaf growth the hand selected uh raspberry that i found in the wild putting on its new suckers some shallots right there and all garlic so you can tell the pattern lots of garlic lots of potatoes lots of radishes lots of lettuce um, this will all transition and change as the season progresses more but lettuce and root crops garlic and potatoes will definitely be the main crops along with carrots, turnips, radishes. All these white flowers right here are wild strawberries. And it's, can't really see it. It's this whole field. This whole field is wild strawberries. I just think that's really cool. So tune in in another week or so. It's Jay's grass-fed garden update. Thank you for everyone's support. Um, yeah, blessed to be here, blessed to be doing this, I'm grateful, so thank you.
and we'll see you on the next one. I just learned this one. It's called Robin's Plantain. Uh, I don't know any of the medicinal values or benefits of it yet. I haven't gotten that far, but I just um, have identified it. And it looks like it's about to put on a nice flower, which would be a good supply of nectar for the early pollinators. So thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one.